Oh, good evening. On tonight's late night issue of PCG in Pajamas. Uh, looking at randomizing, or rather, populating surfaces of uh, objects that want to spawn. Um, so in this case, we have a table that gets decorated. Um, Again, we're just looking at sort of learning the system rather than creating compelling looking content. Um, but you'll see here, I've got a PCG object we just drag into the scene. Um, and as we move it around, the table is uh, redecorating. And if we simulate, you can see, boop, that we eh, have interactable objects. It's interesting, I'm not sure why right now, but sometimes when I drop it in simulate mode, they fall through the world. But if I let them roll off the table first, they're good. Uh, so that's, uh, oh, and you can see my day night cycle. I turned back on at greatly increased speed is going. Uh, so anyhow, that's my, uh, that's a little preview of what we're going to be looking at making. I ended up making a, uh, static mesh sort of physics object actor class that just, if it's got a valid static mesh, sets itself to simulate physics. That way I don't have to check that on every single time. It sets up like one or two other things. I guess I can show you that here. So we got a valid one. Set simulate physics on. And uh, here in the base object, we've set it to movable. Um, that way I have less things to do when I make new ones of these. And I've gone ahead and made uh, one of those for this jar, this um, pitcher, and a wood plate to put on the table. So we'll come look at the PCG graph now. Um, so we get, go ahead and get the actor data, and then a balance modifier. And this is to uh, just set the size of the point to roughly the size of the table. And I was trying to figure out, a, initially I was using a blueprint with a volume to try and do a like only spawn stuff here. It, at least that was not playing nice tonight, but I thought of another way to do it, which I kind of don't like, but kind of sort of works, which is creating another bounds modifier uh, with the Basically, it's sort of the inverse volume, right? So same size, but we call out everything below. Um, we spawn our static mesh, which right now is hard-coded. Um, really love to be able to do something a lot cooler with that later. Like, for example, being able to spawn my static mesh and then sample the static mesh that I spawned. Um, but for now, it's hard-coded. We've got hard object references. Uh, like I said, it's a, uh, uh, and then we go ahead and sample the points. I am using a voxelized sampler because the geometry on this mesh is not super nice and I wanted to have sort of an even distribution. So I went ahead and did a voxel size of five. And uh, when you use the mesh sampler, uh, you have to copy the points over to the uh, static mesh spawner, to, to the output point here, because otherwise they spawn at the origin. Um, and so after that, like I said, we, I run a difference and I subtract all the top points that are on the top of the table. And uh, 
Then we only then we set it to a density filter on objects that are only upward facing uh, for our points. Oop. I keep doing that. Uh, we get rid of any overlap that we've got. And then I am filtering out any that aren't facing upwards by doing grabbing the only the upper 90%. Um, figure that gives me a little bit of back and forth. And so far I haven't been spawning on like the weird edges of the table. After that, I actually go ahead and grab the distance from the center of the table to the points. I go ahead and do a do a remap on that because it's a really narrow range, and so I want a nice smooth gradient um, on that. And after I do that, I then remove the points from the edges of the table. Right, that way we won't spawn big jars or plates that are kind of already halfway off the table. Um, and uh, from there, I use that set of points as my sort of, this is my sort of spawnable area in general. Then we'll look at coming in here and uh, spawning some objects. So over here, I go ahead and set the bounds to the size of my pitcher. Uh, sort of hard-coded. Um, this picture was annoying because it's offset, like sort of, its pivot isn't at the bottom of it, so you can just place it on the surface. It's in the middle of it. So I ended up having to offset it 13 units. Uh, and then we go ahead and do a self-prune. And uh, so that gives us these objects here. And then I go ahead and I uh, actually run a noise modifier so that we can get sort of a new random sample from within that. Because you don't want just the whole table to be the same jars. And then right now I'm cutting out 50% of the points that are valid and spawned and everything. Uh, then we go ahead and spawn those uh, those uh, static mesh actor subclasses that I made. Uh, that one I need to re rename, I think. And then we do something very similar over here, right? We do the jar, we set its bounds, uh, transform the points to a little bit of random rotation. We remove our overlaps, and that leaves us with these objects here which we run through a noise. What's the one that what's with the hotkey for that? Control Alt D. Oh, Alt D. Oh, I like that. There we go. Um, we run our density filter. And then I uh, remove any uh, pictures from it. Uh, and then we go ahead and spawn our jars. And then we do the same thing with the tables for the plates. For the plates, one thing that I actually ended up doing was coming back and um, going ahead and removing these from the source up here because I was finding that I wasn't able to really pick good points in the sp space. So, because what I would do is, you know, it would, it would, it would pick a point here and then um, go through the thing. And I ended up getting better results after going ahead and pre-pruning those spawn points from this, from that, and then setting my bounds uh, and then doing, uh, you know, self-pruning, uh, attribute density filter overlap here um, ended up getting me slightly nicer placement of plates um, and uh, yeah 
that's 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 it really um it's a cool system there there's some some things i'd love to to see updated with it um namely being able to sort of just have an input pin that's like a static mesh uh reference uh, would be would be awesome um and uh being able to plug those inputs into the rest of your stuff um and uh, being able to define some markup zones inside your static mesh for responding like actors and things like that and for, for picking volume zones, it would be really nice. Um, maybe there's a nice elegant way to do that. Might just need to pick at it some more. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, We'll go ahead and play in selected viewport. And so, hey look, there's my table. And I ran over it and knocked everything on the ground. Um, I need to implement a better character controller for debugging. Uh, normally it's in VR and you can grab and pick stuff up. But uh, I'm in my living room right now waiting at my downstairs remodel. So uh, I don't have my uh, lighthouses or any of that set up. So anyhow, that was fun. And uh, thanks for watching. That's my update for tonight. Uh, let me know what you think. All right. Bye.